Um, another reason why, um, you know, March is such a, a big month in the FX market is because we have a ton of important monetary policy announcements. We'll start off this week with the RBA um, rate decision, and we're just kind of going chronologically. Now, in terms of the RBA statement, um, there's a possibility that they can acknowledge some of the recent signs of slower growth, like, you know, the drop in capital spending, the drop in construction work. Today we had a little bit of improvement. Um, having just shifted to a neutral stance at the previous meeting, um, if they were to disturb their kind of on hold steady rate stance by suggesting that, you know, there's been some signs of weakness, that would be uh, terribly negative for the Australian dollar. This whole flip-flopping would um, erode the credibility of the RBA. Now, I think that given the improvements that we've seen in the um, the improvements that we've seen in the um, data this morning, there is probably a greater possibility of um, just the RBA um, making no new comments, you know, maintaining their um, steady stance. But if for whatever reason they do sound a little bit um, less optimistic, that would um, be extremely negative for um, the currency. Now, taking a look at um, the Aussie dollar itself, you can see um, that the Aussie dollar um, has uh, fallen. And for those of you not familiar, these are my double bowling demands. You may have read about them. But um, Aussie is uh, trying to push itself into the sell zone, which is negative um, for the currency. This, 88, this 89 level is very important. If it drops uh, materially below 89, um, then there's no major support in the currency compared to 87 cents. But how it trades here will be key, and of course, most likely is going to hold this level going into the RBA rate decision, be, um, whether or not um, it holds a basis level contingent upon the RBA rate decision. Um, another, what could have a larger impact on the Australian dollar could be um, China's annual National People's Congress, which begins this week. Um, it is a pretty big meeting, you know, only happens once a um, once a year, and it is in this meeting in which the um, Chinese government basically approves policies, laws, and the budget. For the financial markets, um, the focus will be on um, their growth target. So while it's a nine-day meeting on March 5th in the opening um, comments, Premier uh, Li will basically um, uh share with the world their 2014 GDP target. Right now the market expects um, right now the market expects the Chinese government to maintain its seven and a half percent GDP target rate. Um, and you know we all know that China's a very big slow slowing Chinese growth is a very big story in the FX markets um, this year. So um, given that they're setting the growth target in March, you know this could have implications globally as well because if they um, downplay um, the 7.5% growth rate, it suggests that China um, would not be troubled by slightly slower growth. That could probably accelerate the losses in the Australian and New Zealand dollar, for example, because it would suggest that China actually expects weaker growth than 7.5%. Now, on the other hand, if they... On the other hand, if they suggest that 7.5% is the bottom line, um, and that would, you know, basically imply that they expect strong growth. That would probably be extremely positive for the for the Australian dollar. Now, the Chinese yuan is a pretty big deal. I mean, um, we've been watching this uh, uh, Chinese yuan rate for some time. I'm going to pull up the chart real quick. Uh, just give it one second to load. All right. So right now, this is a chart of dollars to yuan. So what this chart shows tells you is obviously we had a huge rally in the U.S. dollar and, you know, therefore sell-off in the Chinese yuan. So a massive sell-off in the Chinese yuan, it's basically trading, the Chinese yuan is trading at its lowest level since June. So you may know that China is supposed to maintain a relatively narrow trading band for its currency. And you may also know that most of the demand, most of the, um, that the Chinese yuan is supposed to be undervalued. So typically when you have a, the trading band, the currency kind of gradually moves, um, dollar to NY kind of gradually moves lower, with Chinese yuan slowly appreciating. But this shows a rapid depreciation of the Chinese yuan. And when you have this type of magnitude of a move, the People's Bank of China is definitely involved. And it is clear that they're engineering kind of two-way volatility in the currency. 
Now, we've been watching this trade for some time, and we said that there would probably be a catch-up move from the Asian currencies, uh, particularly the Australian dollar, and we've seen that. But I think it's important to understand, you know, um, you know, what's the motivation between this. Because, you know, first of all, yes, the PBOC is trying to engineer some two-way volatility in the currency and let everyone know that the country is moving in one direction. But um, it is also clear that they're hoping that the weaker Chinese win will lend some additional support um, to China's economy. So, you know, right now the Chinese yen is trading well above what it's supposed to be the fixed rate. And um, the question here is this, if this represents a major shift in the stance of the PBOC, who is no longer looking for um, yuan appreciation, but could be looking for yuan uh, depreciation. And, you know, while that is certainly a possibility, I think that um, for the most part, you know, it seems like, you know, for the time being, it seems like they're still trying to do a QA um, action. It's not as much of a risk. But keep an eye on this, because the longer the CNY falls, the more pressure it will have on um, the dollar yen as well as on the Aussie dollar.